My name is Stephen Kennedy. This is my video assessment for CISC 8110. I'm going to focus on my Year 10 classes for Religious Studies. I'm the Head of Faculty and I believe in breaking down the silos of traditional education models. I've been driving some engaging new topics for study in the NCA classes of Year 11 and Year 12, but I haven't found a way to get this trickling down into my Year 10s for engagement. I've been teaching the same for about 10 years and I'm quite sure my students are quite bored. I know I am. We have a set syllabus from the New Zealand bishops called Understanding Faith in New Zealand, and they're interesting topics, but they're really dull activities in old paper textbooks. The textbooks were updated as PDFs and distributed free to the schools, which is good for my budget. According to the SAMR model, the PDF of an old textbook is really just substitution with no functional change. The year 10s really need some new life breathed into their stuff to get it to modification and beyond. In New Zealand, there's actually no curriculum for religious studies. So what am I assessing my students against when I give them a quiz with a score out of 10 for general knowledge? Knowledge for knowledge sake is becoming incredibly irrelevant with all the data on their smartphones now. One real blessing at my school is we now measure student engagement through the five key competencies each fortnight. But one of the curses in my class I noticed is that I'm not really even giving the students a chance to explore the key competencies when we work through PDFs of textbooks. So how can I authentically measure their development in the key competencies? Stakeholders in my class are the students first, and I survey them to find out if they are looking forward to class, if they talk about it with their parents, or if they even really care about their learning as much as I do. I'm always getting the same results for a couple of these questions in the last 10 years I've done it. And I'm worried that if I always do what I've always done, then I'll always get what I've always got. Here's one of my best students explaining what he meant from some of his ideas in the April 2017 survey. I was wondering if you could tell me, um, what do you like about class? Uh, I like listening to theories and stuff, but I'd also like to do some more practical and fun things. All right. Um, and what do you kind of expect of a teacher? What do good teachers do? Well, that the teacher treats me fairly and they um, usually turn up with something interesting. Yeah, cool. I like interesting yeah. stuff too as well, mate. All right. And what do you think the teachers expect of you? Um, to be respectful and uh, listen up and work hard. Yeah, cool. I yeah. agree, mate. Good. Tell me about the really boring lessons, especially my ones. What are the boring ones like? I uh, like doing like writing and reading words and like an essay or something like that. The essays are pretty painful, eh? Yeah. My idea is to have an innovation through gamification. I'm focusing specifically on the Year 10 religious education topic called Journey Stories. It takes most of Term 2, and the idea is we can use board games to explore the ideas of Moses in the wilderness, or Jesus' key events in Jesus' life, or the journeys of St. Peter and Paul around the Mediterranean in the first century of the church. One criticism here is that people will walk into my room and see that I'm teaching board game design rather than religious education. And this is not a problem for me. If I was assessing the students through an essay, I'd be teaching essay writing skills and paragraphs and sentence construction. The problem with essays is that one person will read your piece of assessment once. Here, gamification will actually give us a set of skills through the key competencies that will capture the imaginations of the students. I really believe that games have a unique potential to engage people in collaborative activities. I think that board games are a part of our cultural DNA. Board game design reflects our culture, and if a classroom is multicultural like in New Zealand, then the games must also celebrate the different languages and cultures. I would love my Filipino, Samoan, Tongan and Māori students to design board games in their languages. This will challenge them to find new partnerships and collaboration, and also challenge me to lead lessons where I'm not an expert. I did not my, do my degree in Tongan board game design. Other teachers of languages and parents at home will become co-constructors in the process. I noticed that many critics are talking about collaboration amongst teachers, leaders and students being lined up with the key competencies. And for me, this will be very exciting. One of the main outcomes I see will be that we'll be motivating students, that'll be motivating themselves and regulating themselves. These two ideas are New Zealand key competencies and Microsoft rubric for 21st education ideas. 
Another focus will be a focus on real-world assessment. My students will be making board games for the local Catholic primary school that does not use devices or Wi-Fi in its classrooms. That's why we're making analog roller dice board games. So what do I hope to achieve? I want my students to see that the knowledge of the RE program has purpose, is fun and is truly engaging. I want the students to realise and understand the processes of collaboration through board game design. This is an experiential learning process and it redefines me as the knowledgeable teacher up the front to something of a discovery guide. I saw once at the Polytech written on the walls, the person doing the work is doing the learning. And for me, this is a real key to unlocking this gamification. When the learners are in charge, the results can be magical. God, I need some magic in my classrooms and their imaginations and in their board games. I'd really like to challenge this quote I found, that teacher support is important to student engagement. Yeah, I get that, but it drives the idea that teachers' expectations are high, clear, and fair, so the kids will do well. But I really want to challenge that. I think that the students need to have high expectations that are clear and fair. They should be co-constructing the boundaries and the rules and the regulations of how they're doing it. So let's look at the actual unit plan I want to try out in Term 2. This is it on the left here. You can see there's the 14 steps I've come up with to design board games. And even on the right, I've allocated numbers of lessons that I think will need to do this. I promise you the students will never get to see this page. Instead of seeing knowledge as something we have to master, I want to see it as a process, something that happens in a context, that's the board game, and in the relationships of working in class. The old system was knowledge as a noun, something to get even if you didn't really want it or need it. The new plan I have starts by interviewing year two students at a local primary school. If my students construct the task requirements, the project timeline, and to allocate responsibilities in teams, and make the marking schedule for the board games, it'll take a really long time to do this, but they're owning every step of the process, so the key competencies are given life, and we're still following the RE textbook about Moses. I believe we could even start a business making these for schools across New Zealand. Self-regulation models empower students to actively engage in the problem-solving process, thereby increasing their autonomy. Oh, that's the word for me. Autonomy would be me stepping back and seeing the boys own their own learning. The marking schedule would be determined by all the stakeholders, especially the little children playing the game. My youngest son is one of them. And I'll be using the bi-weeklies in my school to measure key competencies, and they'll have a chance to show me what they can do. How will I measure the success of the gamification? Well, I will ask the stakeholders. This list will actually, list will actually widen. First of all, we need to see thinking and learning what happens when people get together. That knowledge will create authentic real-world problem solving. The problem is the kids at the local school don't have any board games in their own language to play to understand Moses. So this will be redefining the stakeholders. Or I'll need to ask the stakeholders. They'll be marking the games, they'll be critiquing each other's, unpacking the process. I want to hear from parents that there's conversation at the dinner table or on the way home from football practice. And also I know I'll be even involved in this as well as a stakeholder. I'm the one in the class doing it and I'm the one appraised. Wouldn't it be wonderful I was, if I was seen as a leader in experimentation, taking risks in my class and trying new things? Hey, just to wrap up, you need to, but these are the references that I used for some of my quotations. All the pictures were from Bing's free. So I hope that helps. Thanks a lot. I've really enjoyed this. Cheers, bye.